All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to week two of the React JS course. I hope by now you should know how to create a really simple application using React. So this week, you're going to create two very tiny components. Uh, and also, I think you're going to start to add Bootstrap to your uh, application, OK? So before we go any further, um, I'm going to spend in this video to talk about some of the technical things with uh, about React JS, OK? The things that you should know, uh, especially uh, the JSX and text, okay? So um, let me go to the uh, website here and we'll talk about um, a few things here. And also I'm gonna just turn off my um, camera here. Okay, so on the website, uh, week two, make sure again, read the textbook in chapter one and two here by now, look at some of the things um, in there. Uh, again, this is a review of the first video I posted last time. So just, um, know these features and these um, are meaning here, okay? The real DOM versus the virtual DOM, okay? You're gonna see this as we move along, how things actually work, okay? So uh, these, again, just some of the uh, uh, the layers of um, behind the React uh, program, okay? So I'm gonna go right here and look at the JS sex syntax. Okay, so again, I already mentioned the previous video, but I do wanna uh, talk about this a little bit deeper and we'll do a little example as well to show you uh, why this is so, okay? So again, look at the syntax. Uh, it looks just like HTML. You will see that in React uh, file, everything you write in there is really conformed to the JSX, okay? Even though they look like JavaScript um, and HTML and they're not, and usually, you know, you don't mix JavaScript and HTML in the same file, right? So. That's a that's that's the JSX syntax here. Okay, so let's look at that. Um, just a few gotchas about using class attribute. Okay, you have to use the word class name because the word class is a keyword in JavaScript, so you cannot use the word class again because it's JSX and, and also in JavaScript, right? So in, in the code, you cannot use the word class as an attribute, um, and among others as well. But that's one of the uh, common ones. Um, so down here. Again, JSX follows the very strict rules of XML. If you are not familiar with XML, it just means that every tag must have a closing tag, okay? So every tag is always uh, comes with a pair, okay? So unlike uh, HTML, where you don't have to uh, close some tags, uh, like the BR image, um, a link, or those tags, you don't need the closing tag, but XML, requires it. So JSX follows that strict rules. Just make sure you follow the rule. Again, the structure, make sure you know what they are. Um, components, okay, again, you have a root component. There's always gonna be a root component. And then um, you can inject other components to that root component. So everything starts from that root component, okay? If you kill that root component, everything is destroyed. Okay, so here in the IDE, I'm going to create a project in here. Uh, well, let's create a unit two for now, okay? So I'm gonna go into the terminal and we're gonna create an application here. So npx react create react app. I'll call this just uh, demo dash app, okay? So we'll let this run. Um, well, that's been run. I'm gonna go and do something here uh, for you. I wanna talk about the different types of importing, exporting modules, okay? So just really, really a quick refresher. Now, React uses what's called the ES module system, which is quite common nowadays. I believe Node.js uh, is already kind of used that as a default, but an older version of Node.js, I would say probably 16 or, or older, it uses the common JS module. Okay, so here's what I mean. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let's do this. I'm gonna create a two files out here, just, just to, to test this out, dot, dot JS. Another one here called index.js. Okay, so in the data.js, let's say I'm gonna create a variable called um, tag is equal to dog, okay? And I'm gonna export this. So using the common JS, so this is the common JS module, you usually, right, you usually use the module that exports property and then export the path out, okay? So export that up to the index so I can use it. Let me put it over here. Now to use it, you will use the a variable called path. I'll call same name, whatever I want, doesn't matter. I'm gonna use the require, okay? And then coming from the data.js, right? Oh, just did, I think. Um, let's see if that takes it. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and console log that to the console. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and open another terminal down here. Okay, so we the other one is still running. Make sure I'm in the correct directory. Okay, so good. So usually you would just type node and then index.js, it will run. So you see that it says, and there's an error, require is not defined in ES module scope. So I believe uh, Node.js uh, 18 maybe uses the ES module by default. Okay, so in the older version of Node, usually you just type Node, it will run. Not only that, uh, it says it has a .js extension. So uh, because of the newer version of Node.js, if you type the Node.js file, it will assume that is, that is the default ES module. If you want to use the common JS module, then you have to name it with the CJS. Okay, so in this case, I have to go ahead and rename this. Uh, no, not delete, just rename. I have two, it's a quick way. So CJS is the common JS. <clears throat> Same thing here. Okay, um, and then I'm go ahead and run again this time. I'll put here CJS. Okay, so you see that it works this way. So the CJS extension is now treated as a common JS. If you leave it out, just put that JS, then no JS will use it as the ES module. Okay, so you can see I export that up as as a dot. Now the common module. So the other one is the um, this is the common module, right? Using the ES module, this is the ES module. You use the export singular. Okay, export default and then. Okay, so export that pet out. Over here, now I'm not gonna use this require. Instead, you're gonna do like import pet from and then the same data file. Okay, let's call it, um, let's call C, uh, JS. I think you have to name it with a JS now. So it's like going back be between the two. Again, this has nothing to do with React, but this will show you why this is so. Okay, so let's put here, um, uh, yeah, this is same file. Uh, put here doggy. Okay, and then I'm going to and run node index.js. Okay, so you see that it works because I'm using the ES module system, which is .js. So React and most frameworks you'll see use this ES module system. Okay, if you're working with Node.js or the Express framework, you'll see that it usually used the common JS. So that's one thing I want to get out of the way before um, you may ask why. All right, so now let's go out to our application. Oops, let me go over here. I have too many of them, let's leave the other one. Okay, so let's go into our unit two and go ahead and go to the terminal and demo app. All right, so that is good. I'm gonna go ahead and run it. So npm start will run the application. Hopefully there are no errors and there shouldn't be any, right? We didn't touch anything there. Um, so here we go, and I'm gonna launch it. It's a different screen, but it should be running right here, actually. Okay, so here we go. It's working nicely. Um, and then, okay, so what is running, I'll leave it here. And I'm gonna go and talk about a few things. Okay, so this is running. We don't have to restart again. Now let's go into the SRC folder and, and the index.js. This is, again, the entry point to your program. All right, so, um, one rule is that all in React, okay, all your import statements must be at the very top of your file, okay? If you don't do that, it's not going to work. It cannot have any other statements above these other than a comment. So in other words, I can have like, you know, a comment here, right? Um, whatever it is, that's fine. If I move up here, it's okay, right? But if I have a statement, let's say, you know, let h is equal to three, 12, okay? If I do that, may not, may not be, may be okay here. Um, let's see what happened to the application. I'm wondering, you can see it crashed, okay? So it says import in a body module reordered to the top, right? So when you do that, it's not going to work. So you must have all your statements above these import statements, okay? It's a very strict rule. If I do that, everything is okay again. Okay, that's one thing you need to uh, be care careful of. Um, the React object up here is just the root object of your application. If you do not have that statement, again, it's not going to work. Okay, so every so the entire application will use this in import a React from 
the React uh, library. Okay, if your file is supposed is to be used in React, it must have that. Um, even if you don't have, if you even use it, like a, like the like you see down here, we're not even using this a React. Well, the yeah, object other than down here, right? If if you don't use it, you still need to import it. Okay, so that React will know that this entire file is a React uh, file. Okay. Um, so that's that. The other one is that you must use, I'm sure, I shouldn't say you must, it's highly recommend that you use the JSX syntax for your application. Um, so everything you see here is usually uh, follow the forms of uh, JSX. So let's, let's, let's do this, okay. So um, I'll, I'll leave this as is, okay. I don't wanna mess it up, um, but you'll see that it imports the application from the app file, right? app.js here. So uh, this one, notice you don't have the React imported here because it's already imported up here, right? So when you import it in, it's already applied there. But of course, it's not gonna hurt to do it again up here if you want to. Um, it's okay to do this, that's fine. If you use that in the code here, like, okay? But if you don't have to have it, it's okay because if you import it, it will be already used. So um, let's, let's do something uh, uh, like this, okay? So this is fine the way it is. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, so let's say that, um, let's remove, okay, so everything here you see here, okay, in, inside the return statement from here to here, looks just like HTML, right? You've probably seen it. And you will see here again, the class name attribute and the regular HTML tag, you will just use class like this. Okay, because class ID is, is okay. ID is fine because ID is like, it's no problem, right? Um, so yeah, one, two, three, doesn't matter. Oh, maybe like a dash one, two, three. Okay, so that's fine, but it'll crash the application because, um, let's see, I'm surprised it doesn't, uh, but usually it, it this is how you do, okay? I, it didn't crash it, I think, but it would, it should have some error in the message if I'm not mistaken, mm, interesting. Okay, so so again, just just don't use the class. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's gonna crash somewhere, but use the class name. Um, all HTML components. Okay, of course this is again JSX, but oftentimes we'll say this is HTML because they have exactly same tags as in the HTML. So basically, React encompasses all the standard HTML and use that inside the application. In addition to that, you have your own component you can create. We call this the custom React component. Okay, so all these standard HTML tag must be in lowercase only. You cannot have like a couple of D like this. In the regular HTML file, it doesn't matter because HTML is not case sensitive, but in React, all regular HTML tag must be in lowercase. Okay, that is a very strict rule that you must follow. So even though there's no error here, if I say the file, go to the application, let's see what happens. And you will see that div is not defined, okay? Because in the rule of React, all the custom components, in other words, all your React components that you create must be in Pascal form. So that means if you see any tag that has a capital letter in the front, React will automatically think that that is a React uh, um, component. Okay, so that's just the rule. Okay, so all tags must be in lowercase if it's if they are HTML. All the tag that you create, custom application uh, component, must be in uppercase. Uh, I mean, uh, using the Pascal case, right? You capitalize every letter of every word in your uh, function in classes. So as you can see, it's called capital A. Okay, so if I create another component like this, right? Function, um, let's say stuff. Okay, and here I return a tag h1 uh, like my stuff okay so this is a function component in react right just a regular function is a component uh, it can be treated by one like one if you use it if you don't use it it's just a regular function as well but let's say i want to put put it down here let me turn all these off here okay and then um i wish i can i can display right here on my screen let me close this side and let's rearrange this so I can see a little bit better. I want to see this and the output, where's it at? Uh, this one here, right? Yeah, okay. 
So let's see if this works. Okay, maybe this will work. All right, so the output is on the right side. And you see there's nothing there because I didn't put anything here. As you can see, if I type something here, it's gonna show up over here, okay? So if I put uh, in here, so this is a custom component. It returns the H1 tag. So usually it would just do that, right? And you see on the right side like that. Now, instead of this one, I'm gonna add in my stuff like that, okay? So you see that it's gonna crash your program. If you press F12, it will tell you in the console that um, invalid dumb, okay? So as, as you can see, class name, it was before, right? Before it was there. But it doesn't recognize this tag called stuff, okay? Because again, lowercase, React would treat that as a regular HTML and it's invalid, okay? So if you function, if your own component, you want to use that, you must capitalize your function name, okay? All functions in classic components must be in that format. Very strict and you must follow it, okay? So you go, it comes right back. And normally we don't create function using all capital letters, but again, React is different, okay? So follow that rule. Um, this is a class component. I can also, you know, use a, I mean, a function component. I can also create a class. We'll do that next time. Okay. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to cover. I want to tell you uh, for this uh, module and basically this week. Okay. It's so follow the syntax. Um, practice. Okay. Practice it. Use it um, in here. So what we have here is the regular. JSX syntax. And this is the preferred way to do it because it's just easier uh, to, you know, for us to write. It's the, it's, uh, the make it very declarative. You just declare your tag and use it this way. So this is like a regular HTML to make it as simple as possible. But you don't have to use JSX, okay? You could use regular JavaScript to do that as well. Uh, uh, so JavaScript function. React includes those as well because there's sometimes you can do that if you want to dynamically. So for example, this is a declarative statement. I can rewrite this using, let me do here, using the regular function that provided by React. First, I want to import a um, import a, uh, a function called create element from, from the React, okay? So this function here is part of React that allows you to create DOM elements like you normally use like the document that create element in JavaScript, the same idea. Uh, so for example, I want to create this exactly same copy here in my, in my code. Then I would do this. I will return here. I'm going to use the create element. It's a function. It takes a couple of parameters, not three, three things, three elements. The first one is the type of the element. Okay. So in my case, I want the H1. So I want an H1. The second is what's called a props. Props would be like classes, IDs, and uh, on click events, all those other attributes you add to a tag, right? So it's an object of those things. You can leave it blank for now. And then the third one is, it's called children. Children meaning like other components, other things. So in this case, I'm just gonna put here a text. So text is a children, right? It's a it's an element. I mean, a node in the HTML. So hey, I can put here um, my uh, cool stuff, okay? So you can see that it comes right back up here. Let me clear this, right? So this is using what's called the just regular JavaScript method approach. This is using JSX. So you can see how, how they work. If I want to add, if I go into the, the, um, the ID here inside the class, right, app, there is my H1. If you want to add in, a, let's say a class of ID, you put that in here, right? You put your ID and then, you know, um, me or something like that, right? And you're gonna see the ID has been added to that tag. So this is the properties of that tag, okay? What if you wanna nest another tag, right? So in the other way, I can do, do this and maybe I wanna put like a span tag like this, right? Span and then and you can do a span here. Right? So let me turn this off again so you can see, okay? You see that it works just fine, my stuff. And the H1 has, H1 and then my span tag. So it declared the approach is nicer and easier to do. Imagine you have to do that in React and using code. Well, you could put that inside here, it's fine, right? I could put that um, like, like this. I can put the tag in here, it's fine. If I want to do that, that's fine because using 
just regular HTML inside here, okay? Uh, but you can see that it's not working the way you want it because it takes another way to actually uh, interpolate that into actual element. But it's not the way you want because it, it treats like a regular text. So you don't want to do that, right? So it, it takes some more effort to do that because you have to nest other child elements into that H1 and so forth. And that takes effort. So yeah, I mean, you have to create another element and put that in here. What does it mean? If I want to do what I just did here, then I have to, you know, uh, I do a little bit more work, okay? I have to inject another uh, component in there using another create element and then add that in here. And it's not, you know, it's not really that that nice. So, okay, so that's why we use JSX whenever you can, okay? So just result to use JSX. And I'm just gonna show you why you use it and why you, why you don't use it sometimes. You don't use it because if you're using the regular way like this, you have the ability to use variables and add stuff. What does that mean, right? So I can make this more dynamic. So instead of saying H1, imagine I, I do this. I could do uh, a, I pass into this object, right? It it, it follows in here a, a an object called, um, I don't know, we we'll call it um, like uh, data, right? So data. And here I wanna put like data dot element, right? Like that. So for example, and when I pass to the stuff, I'm gonna pass in a um, uh, data is equal to, uh, call it um, element, and then it has the value of um, H1, okay? Uh, let's see, it's not gonna work, element's not defined. I think it's a data dot data. Okay, um, let's see H1, H1. Is it a colon? No, it is H1. Yeah, it's not working now, but I, um, this is how you actually do it. You can pass data to the data here, and I'm not sure what is not working. Let me see. I swear it's, it's supposed to. Um, let's see what that looks like. I'm curious to see what it looks like if I run error indicator. So, okay. Okay, so this is, I think it's not right. I'm gonna do this with the, I wanna pass an object, okay? With the key of element to data. And okay, so data is now shown element of, element is the key, right? So if you expand that, it's the element. So you see the data that element comes through because I'm extracting data from this entire object. So this becomes the data stores this object and then the dot element give me that element. So you can see that I'm making a little bit more dynamic. I can also add something here, right? I could add like the ID is going to be um, myself and then the uh, text be like hi there, right? So everything here will be dynamic. So if I do that, like data, that ID, and then this text will be data dot text. Okay, you see that it's dynamically, right? Using this approach. So um, I can pass in anything I want and my program, this function here will dynamically generate or run this data using this approach. Of course, this is not the only way to do this. You can also achieve this using just the regular uh, way here as well. But again, you have to test what is the element type. Go ahead and then render this H1, right? If it's an H1, because it could have been anything. I could be like an H3. Right, you can see that it's it's dynamic now because what if I pass two or render that type? But if you're doing the declarative method, you don't know what type it is. You have to check it, right? So that is why this will become handy when you create dynamic applications. Okay, so I hope that's um, enough not to confuse you, but I do want to encourage you to use uh, um, JSX. So whatever you do here, everything you do in this course uh, will be just in plain JSX. Okay, so any questions, please let me know and thank you.